Nowadays, airplane manufacturers and airlines are working closely together to reduce the number of pilots in the cockpit more and more to potentially a state where no pilots will be required to fly a plane. Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to a dreaded video topic. Yes, we do have to talk about it as this topic is being addressed more and more in the aviation world. The hype about the potential single pilot operation and or is artificial intelligence going to replace the pilots entirely? What can we expect? And should you worry as a pilot or a future pilot? What are we waiting for? And let's get started. A few years back, some airplanes needed a four-man crew to be able to operate the aircraft safely. You had a navigator, the flight engineer, the first officer, and the captain. Now, the navigator has become completely obsolete, and the engineer you do see every now and then, but 99% of all airlines are safely operated by two pilots. Technology just got better and better over the years. Nowadays, airplane manufacturers and airlines are working closely together to reduce the number of pilots in the cockpit more and more to potentially a state where no pilots will be required to fly a plane. Wouldn't that make this guy super happy? <laughs> But in order to understand this better, let's first take a step back and look at why aviation is even able to talk about single pilot operations. Therefore, we need to understand the implementation of the autopilot. The first autopilot was developed in 1912 for mainly two reasons. First and foremost, to assist the pilots and reduce their workload on longer flights. Now, just imagine the amount of workload former pilots were dealing with navigating, avoiding weather, finding enemy territory, and besides all that, fly the damn plane, which wasn't the most reliable either. So the first autopilot had two features, maintaining altitude and heading. Very basic, but an absolute milestone in the aviation industry. The second reason was to reduce the accidents due to fatigue and pilot errors in bad weather conditions. As mentioned earlier, the pilot had to manually fly every flight for the entire duration of the flight by hand. Now, this causes extreme fatigue and potentially dangerous situations, especially when the pilot encounters bad weather or low visibility conditions, plus low oxygen levels. Now, two of my colleagues experienced an unreliable airspeed event a few months back, and then they had to fly the aircraft manually from New York to Chicago in lousy weather. They had to change over controls every hour because symptoms of fatigue were kicking in. Side note, Mythbusters showed that fatigue drivers made more mistakes on the road than drunk drivers. I advise you to neither drive your car in either state. So now you can imagine the dangers of a fatigued pilot entering bad weather in the last 30 minutes of the flight and is required to fly an instrument approach right to the minimums. So we can say with no doubt that the autopilot was and is an incredibly helpful tool for any pilot. Now take note, tool, a very important word to remember. A single pilot in the cockpit of a plane is not a very uncommon sight in smaller general aviation aircraft. Legally, you are allowed to fly an aircraft with one pilot, given that two requirements are met. One, the aircraft is certified by the manufacturer to be operated with one pilot, such as the Cessna 172 that we are all very familiar with, and most of the Cessna Citation jets. Secondly, the aircraft is legally allowed to be operated by one pilot, given that it is complies with certain legal requirements, like being under 12,500 pounds maximum takeoff weight and less than nine passengers on board. I will not bore you guys with all the legal parameters to fly a plane single crew, but what I will make clear is that most airline jets are required by their manufacturer's operating handbook, as well as the company's operating manuals, to be operated by a minimum of two pilots. And because airline CEOs are greedy and want to save as much money as possible, 
They are trying to change this to one pilot or even in the future, no pilot at all operations. I have personally met one of those pro single pilot or no pilot cockpit CEOs. After a brief chat about this topic with him, I made sure that he would never hire me. <laughs> According to an article published on Euractiv in September 2021, Airbus is developing improvements in their technology to one day eliminate the need for a co-pilot in the cockpit. The article states that Airbus is in negotiations with the EU regulatory authorities on whether the technology can be used to certify aircraft for single pilot operations, either for the entire flight or certain flight portions, for example, during cruise. They claim that their technology is capable of handling most of the duties required and that the pilot on board will only be on board for strategic decision making and monitoring of limited systems. A job apparently only one pilot is needed for. Really? Are you sure about that? The EASA is currently discussing two scenarios. One, where long haul flights can be reduced to only two pilots rather than four, like on my last rotation, for example, stating both pilots will be in the cockpit for critical phases of flight, such as takeoff and landing, and then only one pilot will be in the cockpit during non-critical stages, such as cruise. They will rotate with each other during the flight, always having one crew member resting. The second scenario is a fully single pilot operation where only one pilot will be on board. This will be on shorter flights initially, and the program is known within Airbus as Project Connect. Funny enough, many of you have already flown on this plane or are even type-rated on it. Now pause the video and make a guess which plane that might be. Three, two, one, yes. The fourth best looking aircraft after the 747, Concorde and the Supermarina Spitfire. It is the Airbus A350, that is the future. As much as I love Airbus and their constant strive to improve the aviation industry in regards to safety and fuel efficiency, they are the ones pioneering the SPO, the single pilot operation. It's always a bad sign when they already have an abbreviation for it. And will be starting with this project in 2025. And the leading airline in connection with Airbus at this time is, make an educated guess, primarily flies long haul out of Hong Kong. Yes, good old Cathay Pacific. With the technology already implemented in the military by flying drones autonomously and flying others from the ground, the co-pilot's position will in the future be replaced by an aircraft dispatcher trained in basic flying abilities. Dispatchers today handle anywhere from five to 15 aircraft at the time, supporting them with route and weather information in real time, etc. It is proposed that during single pilot operations, the dispatcher will act as a backup pilot, assisting from the ground if the single pilot on board requires any assistance. So as we can see, reducing the number of crew on your flight is sadly a very real discussion going on by airlines and manufacturers today, claiming that it will be safer and more fuel efficient the more autonomy is brought into the cockpit and the humans are taken out of the equation. And of course, it saves companies millions in salary costs per year. Just a brief reminder, salary costs are absolute peanuts for airlines compared to airplane leasing and fuel costs. Salary costs are less than 4%. So taking out the first officer will make all the difference. Yeah, right. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, seriously. But will this be possible? Will the technology be able to completely replace the judgment, assistance and safety a co-pilot provides? Let's look at a few, let's call them hurdles, the manufacturers and airlines and authorities will have to overcome before taking away the co-pilot. First of all, the pilot is part of a safety critical system. 
a system that was designed over the years to connect and introduce harmony between the pilot's judgment and the computer's ability and accuracy. Now, while we have backup systems on board an aircraft, we also have a backup when it comes to human ability. Removing a human from the safety equation will, without a doubt, reduce the monitoring capability and problem-solving capacity of the cockpit environment. And until now, any addition and improvement in technology has been implemented to improve safety. This one will directly reduce it again. We hear a lot about pilot error. Every other aviation YouTuber talks smack about pilots planting their plane into the ground, about the mistakes they've made. But we are rarely told about pilots saving the day when technology fails. This happens more often than you think. If you want to see how it looks when technology fails on a flight deck, have a look at the flight of Qantas 3-2 and imagine a single pilot in that cockpit when that happened. I have three words. No, thank you. <laughs> what they did was a miracle how they saved that plane, trust me. Number two, what about pilot incapacitation? When the single pilot in the cockpit becomes ill or passes out, you are left with no human intuition and ability in the cockpit. That will put some real confidence into the rest of the crew and fearful passengers. Authorities will have to be able to demonstrate the ability of the technology to monitor a single pilot and notify the cabin crew when the pilot is non-responsive. This is the day when the Microsoft Flight Simulator pilot gets his chance. <laughs> this introduces another problem when it comes to sleep. Depending on which sleep cycle the resting pilot is under, it will take him a long time to be fully cognitive and able to first see the situation and react. Number three, redundancy. People make mistakes, do them all the time. When taking out the second pilot of the cockpit, you will have to implement a system that is able to recognize that what the pilot did is a mistake. It is one thing to have a computer to tell you that two plus two is four, but to have a computer understand the situation you are in and the decision you made from that situation is a completely different thing. In the interest of safety, the pilot can decide to deviate from normal procedures but will the technology allow him to do this? Will it understand? Unusual instructions are a daily obstacle. Pilots need to follow, for example, from ATC on ground or in the air. That is the huge difference. That makes aviation so interesting because it's so diverse and every day is different. Number four, safety. We all remember the tragic German wings accident. The other safety issue is with technology, the more automation and AI, the more threat of cyber attacks. Remember, if we get to no pilot operations, an operator will operate their fleet of aircraft from a command center. This gives us the terrifying thought of a hacked airline fleet. Authorities and manufacturers will have to prove their technology is unhackable, and I'm not so sure how plausible that is playing remote control planes with actual planes and passengers. That's a headline that writes itself. Number five, mental problems. Leaving a pilot in a cockpit alone on long haul flights for several hours will have a massive psychological impact on the pilot. Additional and special training will have to be implemented for such environments. So having a crew member with you at all times is a big morale boost. Taking that away, in my opinion, is pretty problematic. Number six, we have not even looked at the problem relating to upgrading co-pilots to captain, etc. Today, a co-pilot needs to fly a lot of hours with captains in order to gain the experience of commanding an airliner. If airplanes are only required to be flown by one pilot, how and when will new pilots gain their experience? Also, what about the public acceptance? pilot workload during turnaround, pre-flight setups, paperwork, etc. This all contributes to mental fatigue done by only one pilot. I, I, just, I just don't see it. It's too much, if you ask me.
There are so many things that need to be overcome that we cannot fit them all into this one video. So I will leave you guys with my personal opinion. In recent years, success is measured on how cheap we can do something, not on how safe. I hate to break it to you, but there is a blue and white airline, which is one of the biggest contributors to this trend, especially here in Europe. I believe that in the past, when safety was replaced by profit, bad things happened later on. And unfortunately, profit is the big motivator in this case. So many aviation incidents and accidents are a sad indication of this trend. The COVID pandemic has undoubtedly caused financial pressure on airlines, and this might just be a financial solution for them. Safety on board an aircraft is directly dependent on the human factor. Yes, automation is an amazing tool, as discussed earlier, but that is where it is good at. It is a tool, not a creative problem solver in emergency situations. So why not develop a safer cockpit by designing these incredible technological improvements in the cockpit environment in order to increase safety even more? The first word in aviation is, in capital letters, safety. Let's improve it and not compromise on it. In the past, innovation was the cost of many innocent lives. Surely today we can innovate and not compromise flight safety at the same time. That's it for today. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the idea of a single pilot airline or a no pilot airline Maybe we can start a pool in the comments to see where the aviation world or <laughs> fans stand on this topic. Thank you very much for your time. Here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel. Check. Activate the notification bell. Check. Follow my Instagram account. Check. Perform a touch and go at my website. Check where you can get this amazing book. <laughs> and don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best. Your Captain Joe.